Hi guys, uh, my name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant cardiologist and today I wanted to do a little video on the subject of heart attacks uh, and in particular this video is going to be called when is a heart attack not really a heart attack and I'll explain. So what I'll first do is try and explain to you what a heart attack is uh, and then secondly I'll tell you uh, of situations when people are being diagnosed with heart attacks where they may not really necessarily be having heart attacks, okay? Um, so, let's get to it. The first thing to say is this is the model of the heart. You can see that this is the muscle, okay? This is the muscle. You see this, this, all this wall here? This is all heart muscle. And this heart muscle needs blood, like any other muscle. And the blood is supplied by these blood vessels, all right? These small red blood vessels over here, you can see them, and they branch out. And that's why the heart looks red. It looks pinkish because of all this uh, blood, um, you know, uh, oxygen-rich blood going to the heart muscle and supplying the muscle um, with oxygen. Now, a heart attack is when one of these vessels, for whatever reason, gets blocked. And if it blocks, so one of these red blood vessels here, you block it. If it blocks, that part of the heart muscle that that blood vessel is supplying will not get the oxygen it needs because the blood can't get to it. And if you leave it blocked long enough, then that area of the heart muscle will die. Okay, and that will result eventually in the formation of a scar, i.e., dead muscle, which is not really doing anything. The rest of the muscle will is being supplied by other blood vessels. So as long as these are okay, the rest of the muscle will work, but there will be an area which will be scarred, and that's what a heart attack is. And the problem with a heart attack is twofold. One, because depending on how much of the area is damaged or scarred that area will no longer contribute in the function of pumping ability of the heart and therefore the heart will weaken okay and if it is very weak then that can, that can obviously that's a bad thing because you're not able to pump out as much blood as the body needs and that condition is then called heart failure the second problem with it is that if you develop a scar somewhere it can interfere with the normal electrics of the heart and it can predispose people to heart rhythm disturbances in particular uh, things like ventricular tachycardia which is quite a dangerous heart rhythm so a heart attack if you survive it obviously has significant uh, um, uh, impact on future life because of this formation of the scar and the possibility of causing heart failure or heart rhythm disturbances in the future. Now, traditionally, it has always uh, traditionally the definition, the the diagnosis of a heart attack is based on two of the following three features. All right, you need to satisfy two of the following three. Number one, you have to have chest pain, which is sounds like it is coming from the heart, i.e. a heaviness in the chest, like someone sitting on the chest, or a tightness, or a constriction, or a pressure. It's often not a pain, it's a pressure, or a heaviness, or a tightness, or a gripping sensation. And number two, you have to have some ECG changes, which would be in keeping with a heart attack. And number three, when the heart muscle is damaged, it releases these um, products or muscle enzymes uh, which can then be measured in the bloodstream, okay? And uh, if you are able to detect that, then that is very suggestive of a heart attack. Uh, but not on its own. You have to have at least one of the other two things, either ECG changes or chest pain. Now, the problem is that the muscle enzymes that we measure have become so, uh, are so sensitive now that people are becoming over or doctors are becoming over reliant on the muscle enzyme so people are now diagnosing heart attacks just because the muscle enzyme is elevated even though the patient may not have had chest pain or have suggestive ecg changes and the problem with this approach is uh, that whilst it is right in a number of cases um, the muscle enzyme can be released or can be raised in the bloodstream because of other things as well, i.e. chest infections or any infection in the body can release the muscle enzyme. Uh, kidney problems can cause the muscle enzyme to go up. Uh, Pre-existing heart failure can cause the muscle enzymes to go up. 
also a very fast heart rhythm so when the heart is going very fast that can cause a little bit of the muscle enzyme to go up um, so uh, clots in the lung can cause the muscle enzyme to go up so there are loads and loads of reasons why the muscle enzyme can go up and it doesn't just mean that just because the muscle enzyme is raised that the patient has had a heart attack but unfortunately this is what doctors do these days they look at the muscle enzyme and if the muscle enzyme is raised they mark the patient as having had a heart attack but actually that is not always that does not necessarily mean that this person has blocked a blood vessel all right um, and therefore people go home with this diagnosis of having had a heart attack and this is terrible because it causes them great anxiety they carry this label for the rest of their life it uh, affects their insurance it affects their future job prospects and therefore I think as a medical profession we should be more careful about making this diagnosis or labeling people with a heart attack uh, based on just a blood test uh, which could be raised for other things other than a blood test right so the question then is well how do you know if you've really had a heart attack because for example um, you develop uh, you're an old per uh, you know an elderly person in the, your 80s okay you develop a chest infection uh, now and you develop some chest pain now the pain could be due to the chest infection or it could be due to the heart the uh, you measure the blood test the blood test is raised but that could be due to the chest infection or it could be potentially because you've had a heart attack so how do you know what is the how do you discern whether this is not actually a heart attack I, a blockage of the blood vessel um, uh, and just because and the, the, this is just because of the chest infection um, and the problem is at this point in time the best test that people uh, use to try and work out is doing an angiogram so what people do what doctors do is as cardiologists we would then often do something called an angiogram which is where we pass a tube and squirt some dye into the arteries surrounding the heart okay and we delineate them on x-ray to see if any of them are blocked now interestingly at least 10 percent of all angiograms okay one in ten people who present like this have normal heart arteries on the angiogram so if they have normal heart arteries on the angiogram how what, how is it possible that they have blocked a vessel which has caused damage to the heart muscle okay so that doesn't make sense right well when you see these block when you see normal heart arteries in a person that you think has had a heart attack then there are a variety of different possibilities the first is obviously it may not have been a heart attack at all it may have been a ch something else that has caused the blood test to be raised number two it may be that um a clot has formed here in one of the blood vessels but actually the clot is gone and therefore when the clot was there it blocked the blood supply but when you go and do the angiogram the clot is gone so this is what people postulate sometimes and they go if they see normal heart arteries they think uh, maybe that's what's happened the person still had a heart attack they'll say the person still has had a heart attack because the blood test is raised but we think that the only way you can explain it if the arteries are normal is maybe they had a blood clot and that blood clot got dissolved or something like that another mechanism people postulate is oh well there could have been spasm which is um, of the blood vessel so the blood vessel went into spasm stopping blood from getting through and this then caused the heart attack and that's and now when we're doing the angiogram the blood vessels back to normal so this is again a hypothesis but eventually the patient then still gets her left with this diagnosis of a heart attack and the patient is left questioning well if my arteries are normal how can i have had a heart attack and the truth is that um, they may not have had the heart attack so there is a very uh, interesting technique in which you can identify whether you've really had a heart attack or not and that technique is cardiac MRI cardiac magnetic resonance imaging okay so there was a very interesting study done in um, America several years ago where they took um, they like they took um, some dogs and they blocked they tied off this blood vessel all right and they tied off the blood vessel and the dog had the heart attack so 
As the dog had the heart attack, I'm, I'm, I completely think it's horrible to do that to dogs, but I'm just telling you this, this is what the research was. They then studied the heart and they found something very interesting, that when you block the blood supply to the heart, okay, the heart muscle, the most sensitive part of the heart, the bit of the heart which first goes or starts scarring is the innermost layer of the muscle. Okay, so this is the hallmark of a heart attack, uh, a heart attack induced scar or 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 or, or ischemia or uh, a, um, a a suffocation of the heart muscle because of a lack of blood. The, if the heart muscle has suffocated due to a lack of blood, the innermost layer of the heart muscle will be affected first and the scar will move from the innermost layer outwards. Okay, so the scar will always, always affect the innermost layer and if it goes on for long enough, it will move outwards. So on cardiac magnetic resonance, on MRI of the heart, you can actually look for scar. All right, and if you see scar, the scar, if it has been caused by a true heart attack, will always involve the innermost layer of the heart muscle. And there was a very interesting study that was done where someone actually did that. They studied a bunch of patients who had come in with, uh, with uh, a little bit of chest pain, whose blood test was raised, but whose heart arteries were normal. And they studied them by doing an MRI scan, and they found that actually 50% of those patients, all right, uh, not 50, they, they were able to try and work out, sorry, not 50%, they were able to work out in the majority of those patients why that patient had had the rise in the blood test. And 50% of those patients actually had scar, but the scar wasn't involving the innermost layer. It was in the middle, and that is often a feature of an infection of the heart or a viral infection of the heart called myocarditis. All right. So in 50% of those patients, they found that actually the scar was in the mid wall and did not involve the innermost layer. And so in those people, they could categorically turn around and say, actually, you didn't have a heart attack. You had an infection of your heart valve, uh, of your heart muscle, myocarditis. That should therefore not then be labeled as the as a heart attack because it doesn't have the same meaning as a heart attack. So what I'm trying to say is that if you are one of those people who has presented to your hospital and someone has said to you, oh, well, look, you know, we think you've had a heart attack on the basis of the blood test, um, it's not unreasonable to say, well, have I or have I not? And if you've had an angiogram and your angiogram is normal and there is no evidence that you have had a big heart artery narrowing or a blockage, then I do think it is important to ask for a cardiac MRI scan because the cardiac MRI scan will clarify whether you ha actually did have a heart attack or not. Of course, a small proportion of patients truly did have a proper heart attack on that in that study where they did the MRI because what they found was that in a small group of patients they did have this innermost layer of the heart muscle affected by scar and in those people it is right to assume that maybe they had a transient blockage or a clot or a spasm which stopped the blood for it temporarily and then when you do the angiogram the vessel looks okay, but you've still sustained the damage. But in the majority of patients, it wasn't even a heart attack. It was actually a viral infection of the heart. And so there is no need to carry that label if it's a viral infection of the heart, because a viral infection of the heart ha does not have the same meaning as a heart attack. You know, viral infection of the heart is because of a virus. The virus goes away, you're fine. You can get on with your life. You don't have any, there's no um, uh, sequelae to this. Whereas with a heart attack, it means that you've had permanent damage to the heart muscle. So I thought that this would be something which um, may be useful to some of you, just people who have been questioning why or whether they really did have a heart attack or not. If you're ever in doubt or if you're just not sure whether you've had a heart attack or if nothing sort of comes together or makes sense because, you know, someone's saying you've had a heart attack but your blood, of your art, your angiogram was normal, then do feel free to ask your doctor for an MRI scan and say, look, I want to know whether there is scar. And if there is scar, what is the pattern of the scar? If the scar is affecting the innermost layer, 
then yes, I hold my hands up and say, yes, okay, I've had a heart attack. But if the scar is not involving the innermost layer, or if there is no scar, then surely I don't need to be carrying this label around of having had a heart attack. So I hope this was useful. Um, um, thank you so much for all your kind words. Thank you so much for all the great feedback. Uh, thank you so much. My channel is gaining some traction and it's all thanks to you. Uh, I would love to get it, uh, um, you know, more popular. Uh, uh, but I am so, so grateful for the friends I've made. And if you need to talk to me, send me a, uh, a message. My website is www.yorkcardiology.co.uk and my Facebook page and my email are w my uh, yorkcardiology at gmail.com yorkcardiology at gmail.com thank you so much all the best bye